Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talking Television Podcast. This is for Season 2, Episode 2 of Big Little Lies. And tonight, we are missing Savannah, but we do have Amber joining us. Hello. So, you want to tell us what we're drinking? Sure. We have the Shandon from California, the Shandon Brute. It is a little bit of apple, a little bit of pear, and some citrus. It's a dry, spark, uh, sparkling wine. Yeah, kind of dry or sparkling white wine. Yep, and whites are really the only kind of wine that I'll drink. <laughs> None of us are really winies. Yeah. No. Winos? What do they call them? Winos. Winos? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this one, it's, it's a little fruity. It's not super sweet, but... I yeah, it's, it's pleasant. It's okay. Not bad at all. So yeah, episode two... Uh, for season two, this one is called Telltale Hearts, mm-hmm. and it, it's kind of all over the place. It, it was very much all over the place, um, but I, I think there was mainly three characters it focused on, uh, off and on. So mm-hmm. I think we'll focus on those those storylines, and um, the rest I think will play out, you know, in other episodes. Okay. So let's start with Bonnie. Mm-hmm. She's she's definitely struggling, you know, with her family. Everybody notices something's going on. Her husband, not so much, but he, he needs a little bit more help to figure that out. Yep. But yeah, she, she's definitely struggling with uh, the events that happened at the end of last season. You know, she pushed Perry down the stairs, and she's she's wanting to tell somebody. She's wanting to talk about it, but can't find the right way to do that. Yeah, I wish she would talk to her mom or just somebody that she knows she could, you know, just let it out with, but without really incriminating herself, so... I don't know who else she would be able to talk to if she's not willing to tell her mom. And her mom knows that that's when she started acting differently. Mm-hmm. Um, she she really pinpointed that and kind of put you know Bonnie's husband on blast for not noticing that <laughs> and not being able to talk to her. So yeah, she uh, doesn't really daughter, seem, She doesn't her, seem to like the husband. No, not at all. <laughs> Neither does Ed. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they don't get along very well either. So we see uh, Bonnie in the beginning. She's she's hiking, uh, basically just walking through the middle of the subdivision out on the sidewalk. Um, and then later in the episode, she's out hiking in the woods with her mom. But she really seems like she just needs an escape or she needs to get away. Yeah, the, just the day to day daily grind. It's getting to her. You know, she has uh, I think it was like some hot yoga session with Jane mm-hmm. uh, at one point, and they're talking about stuff. But yeah, she seems like she just kind of needs space to think about things and figure out what she's gonna do. And at one point, uh, I think she sees the detective driving behind her and kind of drives past, and maybe that puts a little inkling of who she might need to talk to we saw the detective mm-hmm. following them like three or four times throughout the episode so they're really starting to put the pressure to them in the background always yep mm-hmm. all the time like we said there must not be any other crime in monterey that this oh, is the one they're focusing that's on that's it that's why you moved there yeah <laughs> what else did you uh think about bonnie amber um well her daughter's even noticing that something's not right because before she noticed the detective following her, her daughter was asking her in the car, like, are you okay? Are you and dad okay? What did you, you think about her mom? Her mom's pretty intense and is definitely on a different level than what everybody else in Monterey Bay is with her spiritual beliefs. Yeah, she had some voodoo going on, the chicken <laughs> bones or... The little uh, crystal, too, that she'd left in the bedroom. Bonnie wants nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. She came out and threw it all on the step and said, I don't want any of this. Bonnie and her mom seem really zen, almost almost like the dude we mentioned. Um, So, yeah, I I don't know. They definitely come from an interesting background. The dad seemed really laid back, too. I didn't catch his name, though. Their past, you know, she, she moved away for a reason, I think. She's has different beliefs, you know, different um, ideals that she's maybe wanting to focus on. You know, she came from there so she can see where her mom's coming from with that, but Mm -hmm. I think she's wanting to deal with it her own way, but she doesn't know how. And she needs to talk to people. And that's kind of where she's She learned to play the guitar, like Lenny Kravitz, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, just let the emotions out. Right, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) They'll just flow on out of you. 
Well, the husband is trying to take up running to get in, in cam and hobby with her now. Mm-hmm. Because he said she's running all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, hours at a time, which really isn't that uncommon for a runner. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess he's he's trying. And once again, he, he uh, ends up talking to Ed. And I think the two of them, their little spats are actually kind of funny, even though I don't really like Ed either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like those interactions. He just kind of shows up out of the blue and they just pepper each other with like, Subtle insults. Yeah. It's pretty funny. It's funny because, yeah, he went in the last episode asking for help. And this one, he was like, oh, you want to step outside? <laughs> <laughs> We're already outside. <laughs> yeah. Their beef was uh, it's kind of funny. Yep. It's having a bad episode, though. Yes. He does. Should we uh, should we talk about Ed briefly? Sure. He, he finds out kind of by, you know, mistake. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be home. Or they didn't think he was home. But Madeline... And Abigail were, were talking, kind of going back and forth, and Abigail let it slip that uh, Madeline had, you know, cheated on Ed with the uh, drama teacher? Director? The director? I don't know. Um, the theater. S- theater some director. Some sort of artsy yeah. guy. Yeah, it was the just theater director. And just, you know, basically just giving it back to her, like, well, you, you did this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out that ed's in the doorway and he hears that he hears it all yeah he had no idea nope and obviously that's just he storms out he's got to think about it madeline doesn't know what to say uh yeah it's not not very good the daughter really didn't seem to care either that she let it slip she wasn't like oh. yeah. she was looking that direction yeah she, she could have seen him and just let it go anyway yeah oh well maybe it's not technically her father right right yeah he said uh, he did, you know, he does think of her as a daughter. So, you know, he was kind of upset that he, Madeline wasn't telling him the truth about everything. Well, she, and she knew it for basically a year. And they all kept mm-hmm. it a secret from him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of people know about it besides him. Yeah, because when he came home, he was pretty upset and said, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> yep. How, how are we going to move past that? So earlier in episode, uh, we saw Mary Louise and Madeline having some words again, and Madeline, you know, responded like, "Oh, you know, it's not bad for a short person or something like that." So More short jokes. <laughs> yeah. She said the short joke was because it was about um, Celeste from the beginning of the episode. Madeline had made an excuse that she needed Celeste, and it was the type of an emergency that the kind short people have. Hmm. Yep, that she would know about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the two of them really button heads, so I think it'll come to a point later in the season where they'll blow up on each other or something. Oh, for sure. I think Mary Louise is trying to make everything blow up. Her her son, you know, is dead, and she's <laughs> she's going to get revenge one way or another, mm-hmm. no matter what route she has to go. Uh... So Mary Louise also has a pretty intense episode with Celeste, and uh, her and Celeste, you know, are chatting for a bit, and then Celeste ends up telling her the truth about uh, not only her being beaten, but also Perry raping uh, Jane and having another child, and she doesn't believe her on any of this stuff at all. And she keeps, you know, saying, hey, if that was happening, why didn't you go to the police? She had to know... I, th- I think her she, mom's in denial. I think she knows something. I think she definitely does. Um, and Celeste also made it seem like, well, it was this strange relationship we had. You know, it was kind of back and forth. We were both to blame for it. But he took it too far and, you know, just got way out of control. Mm-hmm. Um, and the episode starts off, you can just tell how Celeste's mind state is. You know, she's driving the car and she crashes. And she's not drunk, but she had taken... You know, a pill, you know, the night before to try and sleep. And it just, she was unconsciously driving, basically. So she's she's in a bad spot. She's trying to deal with all this, these emotions. And Mary Louise is in the the background every, every turn and just you know, peppering her with questions. And just, yeah, it it's a lot of tension there. Yeah, we see Celeste uh, breaking up her kids' fighting and ends up, accidentally knocking or pushing one down 
and you know he bumps his head and she apologizes but once again it's right in front of mary louise so i don't know is that going to give her some ammo to uh take the kids away maybe i guess we'll see she also says that she's gonna rent an apartment close by Mm -hmm. versus living in the same house but yeah saying she wants to stick around for the grandkids Mm -hmm. at this point i i guess is that her end goal is to get um, the grandkids away from Celeste. I would say I mean, so. Other than that, I don't see a reason for her trying to, you know, get to the bottom of it as opposed to just for her own knowledge, you know, to know what happened. But I, I agree. I think she knows what happened, but she wants to deny it and clear his name. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I think she wants to steal the kids away from Celeste. Well, she started doing some math, putting two and two together this episode that, oh, you know, you're saying that you just found out that. You know, he had a baby with somebody else just seconds before he accidentally fell to his death. And, yeah, you know, she's, you know, really kind of putting everything together and I think really blaming Celeste for this. At one point, um, she Celeste was kind of praising Madeline for always being there, being a good friend, saying that she saved, you know, the kids from drowning at one point. And, you know, Mary Louise came right back with, well, where were you? Where were you? I, yeah, I called it right I, before she said it, well, too. Why did she have to do this? You mm-hmm. know, why weren't you there? So she's, yeah, she's giving it right to her, just trying to make her feel pretty horrible as being a mom. Yeah, I think she feels that maybe Celeste was never good enough for Perry, and that's her point of view. Yep. She called her the Enigma. The Enigma, Yep. So let's talk about your favorite person, Amber. Let's talk about Miss Miss Renata. And her red outfit. She is definitely not having a good episode. (laughs) No, she had an awful episode. I actually felt bad for her. (laughs) Yeah, she, you know, started off the season on a high. She was doing her photo shoot at her house, you know, powerful women. She was going to make the cover. And then who shows up? But the FBI. The FBI. (laughs) Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, so we see her and her husband, you know, walking out and about to get in the car. And She just gave him great news. He, can I just mention, he loves track suits, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's always wearing, like, a fly track suit. He never seems like he has anything going on. He's just lounging around the house. He, yeah, he's he, got track he's suits. In, you know stocks and stuff he's, he's got like a i'm happy, sure he's got people dude. at the office doing this and that but he's in new york he would be wearing a suit but they're oh, in california so yeah yep. he just has a beard and track suit and... but he must not uh not be very good at his job because he gets arrested for securities fraud and charged also with uh, mail fraud and uh, wire fraud i think it's just a bunch of charges that they just like throw in it's like a grab bag you know once again, we see the detectives in the background, too. Yeah. Renata, she's pretty much in shock. He kind of confesses in the, you know, at the jail when she goes to visit him over the phone, which is recorded, I'm pretty right, sure. Right, isn't that recorded? And he just confesses all the shit he did. Yeah. Like, oh, I did this and this, and I, you know, pretty much lost all of her money. Sorry. Everything, house, all of it. Yeah, yeah. let's Everything talk about gone. that, because she says, well, you couldn't have lost, you know, my, my money, too. And he says, yeah, you know, it's all gone. How did he lose? A, so we end up getting some news that you know she grew up poor. If she grew up poor and has all this money now, she would diversify most likely. She wouldn't have it all in one pot and you know allow him access to it and blowing it. You think she would have money stashed somewhere else? But that doesn't really fit for me. Yeah, she and she seems very upset that she might have to go back to not being rich. Yeah, what did she say? She said, I will not not be rich, is what she said. Mm-hmm. So, that's a powerful it, statement. It's her, her status, you know, she she needs to feel that way. Um, to feel important, I guess. Especially with all the friends she hangs out with, you know, she's got to be wealthy. Yeah. She doesn't feel, to me, her character doesn't feel like she grew up poor and is now rich. She really doesn't just, she doesn't come off that way doesn't carry herself that way i think that's kind of a last minute thrown in you know character trait i don't think she had this the whole time you know yeah i I agree her her character feels like she's been born into wealth and like entitled and very entitled entitled, snobby and yeah how dare you try and take my money away Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh but she also had one of the funniest parts of the episode which i wish they would have expanded just a couple more seconds and that was her going to visit uh him at the jail and she has to go through the metal detector and you know you see you know the couple times she has to go through take more stuff off and then get wanded 
and the the security lady tells her to put her arms out like an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you don't want too much comedy in the show, especially this episode, which is really drama heavy. But I think like a third time, you know, trying to get through the metal detector with her like really like losing it. Oh, she would have lost it. Yeah, for I, sure. <laughs> I think that would very be you know it would be very on key for Renata, and we didn't get that. So I was a little disappointed by that scene. Yep. So they go for the court hearing mm-hmm. to set bail, and as the Renata fashion, she shows up in a very bright red dress combo happening. And as she's sitting there and they're discussing his bail, she's seeing it in her mind kind of in a different way of people laughing at her and laughing at the bail that's set at $1 million. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, it's a very serious subject, but she just... She's just seeing it as everybody's laughing at her, and it's a joke. Yeah, because, you know, she doesn't have the money for it now. Yeah, now she's going to be broke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a, a million for them is even, you know, a lot to cough up to get him out. Um, but, you know, he, he gets out on bail, and you can see that it's just their relationship is really going to take a, a huge hit. You know, with what he did, not not telling her, and the fact that she might be poor again, she's she's not happy. Yeah, their arrangement, you know, her and her husband, doesn't really seem like they're ever in love either. It just seems like an arrangement, you know. He has status, she has status. Let's come together. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let, let's come together. Yeah, we'll have a kid, and then, you know, it'll make us look good in society. But Yeah, I don't think she would have been nearly upset um, if the money wasn't you know going to be taken away if it was just something he did and he's got to go away and she can keep living her life she'd be okay with it i think Mm -hmm. think she at first she was a little upset just because they were in public and he got arrested people saw that you know Mm -hmm. her friends saw that but i think yeah if if she didn't find out that she could lose it all she'd be like well screw you oh well well, i'm gonna go find somebody else Hmm. i think that's kind of the relationship they have yeah, well, that was a, uh, you could call it a jurassic size bail amount, you know, since she was in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Totally different character. Yes, yeah, very different. Oh, I want to talk about the cars in this episode. So we saw Celeste crash some sort of an Audi SUV, probably a Q5 or Q7. And then later in the episode, she's driving another Audi SUV. So is this one Perry's, or did she go buy another? It wasn't fixed that quickly within a day. Definitely not fixed. I think they had a second SUV and just happened to be an Audi. The, the, the same exact thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause when you're rich, you get pairs of stuff. Yeah. Well, and Audis <laughs> usually only come in one color. It's silver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then also later, Renata, you know, she gets her husband out of jail and she's driving home and they start fighting and she's driving a Tesla and, you know, the giant iPad screen is just completely black. So... Definitely not driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the car's it, not on. Either not driving or disconnected for some reason, but I don't know. It was an interesting choice, but I don't know. She didn't have a big, you know, Model X, which would be the, the mom mobile. And I don't know. I don't know why she would be driving, you know, a lowly, lower Tesla. Yeah. But they got to conserve their money now. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the lower end Tesla, you know, saving, saving some cash. So. Jane's son, we learn that he's known that his father is Perry. He learned from Madeline's daughter because she overheard Madeline talking on the phone. Yeah, Madeline's not very subtle when she's no. on the phone or talking to anybody. She's <laughs> no. I'm yeah. surprised there's secrets in that house at all. Mm-hmm. So he's known since August and pretty much so has everybody else other than Madeline knowing or the moms knowing that they all know. Yeah, he didn't tell his mom because he said she figured, or he figured she would just be lying, which is an interesting uh, revelation by him. She has those trustful bangs going on. I don't know why he would think that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But she ends up telling him all about the sexual assault and Mm -hmm. pretty much what happened to her. I mean, I don't think she went into graphic detail, but she explains why, you know, Celeste's husband has kids over there and him and kind of how it goes together. Yeah. So it's going to be really hard to talk about. Mm-hmm. But Jane ends up telling Celeste that she told Ziggy everything 
And at the end of it, Celeste and the boys come over and um, they all kind of start bonding mm-hmm. to make a better situation out of something terrible. Yeah, and maybe to get away from Mary Louise a little bit, too. Yeah, that could be, too. Yeah, because she finds out as well mm-hmm. yep. this episode. And she wants to know the kid's name, and she wants in on that life, you know. Exactly. Any, anything to hold on to, you know, Perry. Grandson. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it, it's good to see they're kind of bonding together over this. You know, Celeste could have, I guess, turned a blind eye and just totally shunned her for everything, even though it's not Jane's fault, and definitely not Ziggy's fault, but... It's nice to see that she's kind of embracing them as, you know, part of the family now. Yeah, both emotionally and financially, she's sending mm-hmm. money from Perry's estate, so. Even though it doesn't seem like Jane's quite cashing those yet, unless it's to buy Patagonia gear. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> that zoo money she's making, you know, she's living out there somehow. <laughs> yep. Giving tours at the zoo. So while the kids were all in class, um, the teacher is saying how... The kids can all talk to him about something if something's, you know, if they need to talk to him about anything. And all the kids are kind of staring at them or staring at him. And it's kind of like he's trying to encourage one of them to. And so one of Celeste's kids goes, well, can we talk to you about a dead dad? Mm Mm-hmm. He wasn't expecting that. And the look on his face was just kind of like, oh. um." I think he wanted to hear about, like, somebody, you know, stealing your (laughs) peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. Not not a dead father. Yeah, that went from down here to up here real fast yep absolutely he was trying though you know he's had a couple of rough episodes and uh i don't know i think you know i think that's gonna be his story for the year it's just he's gonna be taking the brunt of everybody (laughs) yeah and he better do everything perfectly otherwise the parents are gonna then jump on him even more yep yep so celeste goes to a therapist i think it was after telling mary louise about the abuse from Perry and her back and forth. Celeste feels, I think, feels like maybe she should, you know, part of her says she should should have left Perry. Maybe not necessarily because she also did some of the abuse and whatnot. And the therapist tells her to think back to one, a specific instance of abuse, which was after a Christmas party, like in a closet. Mm -hmm. And so she does that and then says, put one of your your closest friends in in that situation instead of you. So she does, she puts Madeline in it to see like the ramifications of it not being her. Mm-hmm. And then how does she feel? I think it was a really powerful exercise. That the yeah, she, did she, she didn't like that at all. When she first imagined, you know, her back in that position and what happened, she still, I don't think quite got it. Like, Oh, you know, I still miss him. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I wish he was here for the kids. But then the second she saw her friend in that position getting abused, she, you know, screamed like, no, stop. And just, I think that maybe it was the switch that realized like, oh, yeah, this was horrible. Mm -hmm. I should not have stuck around for this. Well, you have a natural, you know, like protection um, emotion, you know, for your friends. You know, you're all, you don't want them to get hurt or injured. And with yourself, I think you can rationalize it and other things that we saw her doing. So... Yeah. yeah, I think that was a smart move. Um, I think the therapist earned her money that, that session. <laughs> yeah, Because yeah. that was a pretty good routine. To... Dr. Reisman, yeah, I think is doc- her name. She doctored the hell out of that session. Yeah, doctored it up. <laughs> so now at the end of the episode, Mary Louise is at the police station talking to the detective, telling her to, you know, dig into Perry's death, that it was not an accident. He didn't slip. Like, he was pushed... Like, she needs to do her job, pretty much. Yeah. I, and I guess it's I'm curious where, timeline-wise, that falls. If maybe that had happened earlier, and that's why the detective is being so persistent and always showing up. Or if it did indeed happen, you know, after some of these other events took place. Right. So. I mean, if that's in real time, and, you know, the detective's already been, you know, kind of putting the screws to him, she's really going to turn it up a lot. Right. I don't know. We all know how Mary Louise can be persistent and persuasive, so mm-hmm. and they'll listen to her. So do we think this is going to end at season two? I don't think so. I think now that they've kind of renewed it. <laughs> I agree. If it, it, 
they should have probably left it at a one and done. But now that they've got everybody everybody back for you know season two, let's keep it going. Got to be at it, least a three. The ratings are huge for the show. Yeah, you know, I don't think HBO is going to really turn that down. Yeah, I think it was eight point one million viewers for the first season, and you know, AT and T owns them now, and they said they want quantity over quality. So I think they're going to start pumping out more seasons of this. Whereas you know, older HBO executives might have yeah left it at one and done. But, I mean, I think they've done a good job so far with season two. It's not like they rushed out, you know, a half-assed story, but... Yeah, the plot line's definitely thickening. <laughs> yeah, this was a crazy episode. It was jumping all around. Hopefully, the next episode's calmed down a little bit. I don't know, I think it was a little too much drama all at once. Well, they only do have the seven episodes mm-hmm. per season, so... With how much, like, little things that they're trying to roll into bigger things it's a lot yeah i think that's why it's kind of bouncing around so much Mm -hmm. i wonder what the timeline will be for this season too is it going to be over a couple weeks or a few months i think the easiest way to tell might be the daughter you know maybe the school year yeah yeah the school year it seems like last one was the school year yeah so maybe over what six to nine months then Mm -hmm. Hmm. well a lot can happen because we're not that far into that no school just started well, that was episode two of Big Little Lies. Once again, we're at Southport Media, as always. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are on the show, and we'll, we'll talk about it next episode. And as far as sparkling white wines go, the Shandon is pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. All right, thanks for listening. See you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.